Atsi. My name is Matthew Norris. I'm Nehita Woodlands Cree and a member of the Lacarange First Nation in Northern Saskatchewan. It's my privilege to sit as the president of the Urban Native Youth Association in Vancouver on the unceded ancestral and traditional territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil Waututh peoples. Before we discuss the UN Declaration, I think it's important to first reflect on the recent discovery of a mass grave containing 215 Indigenous children at the site of the Kamloops Indian Residential School. Indigenous peoples across Canada are grieving and in mourning. This news has had a profound impact on our communities and is indicative of the need to implement the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. This devastating, deeply sad, and frustrating discovery reaffirms the facts and truths of many survivors, that what this discovery underlies is a deep societal and structural divide that separates Indigenous peoples from the rest of Canadians. Indigenous peoples have a separate and distinct relationship with Canadian society, with its government and with its laws and policies, a relationship that has been structured by colonialism and attempts to marginalize and assimilate Indigenous peoples with the objective of opening Indigenous lands, territories and resources to development and extraction. These attempts characterized by not only the residential school system, but also the imposition of reserves, banned council governments, the 60s scoop, the banning of cultural practices, and the denial of Indigenous peoples' rights to just control their own destinies has resulted in a significant societal gap, which can be measured by the disparities in socioeconomic identifiers between Indigenous peoples and the rest of Canadian society. These circumstances are further compounded by recent studies finding systemic racism within our healthcare institutions and child and family services alongside accusations of systemic racism in local and national policing institutions, our educational institutions, and more. Much work needs to be done to bridge these gaps and heal the hurt caused by colonialism. The UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples is how we do this work. The UN Declaration, as articulated by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada, is the framework for reconciliation at the federal, regional, and municipal level. The UN Declaration doesn't introduce new rights. Rather, it applies the rights of the Universal Human Rights Declaration to the particular historical and contemporary context of the world's Indigenous peoples. The Declaration has three fundamental pillars informing its principles and standards as articulated within its 46 articles. The first is a protection of cultural rights, be they spiritual practices, education, traditional ecological knowledge, cultural practices, languages, and more. The second is rights to lands, resources, and territories. This is a significant pillar which includes rights to hunting, harvesting, fishing, development, environmental protection, and sustainability. The third pillar is perhaps the most fundamental, the right to self-determination, which includes rights to self-government, participation, and free prior informed consent. When brought together, these three pillars present the principles and standards by which we can create a future which brings Indigenous peoples and everyday Canadians together an opportunity to bridge the societal gaps to empower Indigenous nations to set the priorities, policies, and laws that best suit their communities and needs, and to redress the imbalances and marginalization at the foundation of colonialism. The recognition of these rights holds great potential for not only the betterment of Indigenous peoples, but the betterment of our collective society as well. The recognition of Indigenous peoples' rights can open doors to climate conscious developments and policy, to greater democratic legitimacy, clear permitting and approval processes, less money spent in courts, et cetera. We are all here to say the implementation of the UN Declaration presents a framework to ensure long-lasting, respectful, and reciprocal relationships between all of us.